Hey folks, hope you're well. We're both suffering from mild colds today, so if I'm sniffy throughout this, I'm sorry. I'm trying really hard. Like, I, I think I can talk about sniffing every five seconds, but if I do, I apologise. Um, both Claire and I have just been feeling rough. Um, she ended up coming downstairs at like four this morning because she had such a headache. She just couldn't cope with it all. Uh, that woman is cursed, I swear. Like every, I feel like if I went back through my vlogs every single week, she's probably got some kind of bug or some kind of thing going on and then I'm just kind of worrying about it and suffering some milder version of it all. Um, so mainly the thing on our minds at the moment is the fact that in one and a half days time we for all intents and purposes expect to know the diagnosis situation with Ollie. We've got a phone call booked in with his paediatrician. She's calling me at two o'clock on Wednesday and I spoke to her assistant last week. I said, what's it about? Because you've just said it's a catch up, but what's it about? And she said, well, you've just had the ADOS, so it'll be about the outcome of that. And I'm like, well, you haven't given us the outcome of the uh, the ADHD test either. And she said, well, I guess you'll just go through everything. And I was like, well, is there any notes? And she said, well, I'm not really qualified to go through it, but I'm gonna assume that's what it's about. And I thought, right, okay, it's only a week. But it has been eating at our souls. It's quite funny, because like, don't get me wrong, I don't want to sit here, well, this video is going to come across a little bit like I'm saying it's really hard and I'm not I'm not being like that like I'm not trying to be like I'm the one doing the fight you know Oliver's the one living with his life and his situation the problem is wanting to have the answers so we can make his life as best it can be that you know we can get him the support he needs we can make him feel happy and comfortable in his in his life and that everything's just in place for him you know we'll, we'll do whatever we can for that so getting this phone call is pretty critical i know nothing physically changes i'm not going to get a call on sort of two o'clock and she says it's autism and suddenly there's sounds from on high and a trumpet plays and suddenly a book comes down and lands in my hand and it just tells us what we need to do and everything's fine and he just lives this life of luxury i know that's not what's going to happen but it's kind of it's the first proper answer we'll get hopefully and once we've got that answer, it means that I can say, all right, you could sign up to that group where like autistic children meet and socialize and get to know each other and it will help you overcome things. You know, the other kids in their, other adults in their past didn't get that kind of luxury of having some acceptance and people to talk to. I'll be able to take you for a haircut, which we did yesterday where he was just so uncomfortable, bless him. And he just kept, he kept saying, this hurts. She said, it doesn't hurt, I've not even touched you. And you know, you need to stop, this is itchy, it's uncomfortable, he didn't like any of it. Everything about it was just infuriating him. And the woman, bless her, was so friendly and calm. And I think just read it between the lines, we didn't go in, or at least I didn't hear Claire tell her that he's autistic. But I think the reason Claire didn't was probably because we don't officially know that. And it's so awkward to go, he's autistic, and think, it might not be and we'll just be awful people who like I know this isn't true and no one would ever care or remember but it feels like you'd be in, like almost bad karma for saying it if it's not true so we pick and choose when we use it if that makes sense uh, you know I wouldn't I, even if he is I'm not gonna walk around Tesco just going you, you know he's autistic he's autistic he's autistic. you know that's not what I mean but going into that scenario we knew it was gonna be difficult so we were trying to prepare him and by proxy prepare the lady and she got it she was actually really good she had deals she did tell him it would take one minute and like a minute later she said look I just need a minute more and he was like you've just had a minute you said a minute and I think she realized then definitely that she was dealing with a situation that needed her to be a bit more specific um but he got his hair cut he looks good um you know he, he, he spent most of it talking about Pokemon which again I think meant that she kind of got what, what she was dealing with from that um you know hairdressers must deal with the situations where children just don't want it all the time and it's not always just because they're autistic they're just young and don't want haircuts but she handled it really well um she guessed that we'd been hiding from it because it was really long and he kept saying he doesn't like haircuts doesn't want them to her and she was like well you need this one your hair's really long he's like i like long hair and she was saying you just don't want to have your hair cut and um, we went on a sunday it was nice and quiet she said we should come back on sundays in future because this probably seemed like the best day for him so it was all right but um going back to my point if we have this confirmation then it feels like we are allowed to say it which i feel like we've not been allowed to so far and or we've been saying it in hushed tones in the kind of we don't want to take the mickey i've i <laughs> in a really not trying to make it about me but i feel a little bit mortified is if she says to me on wednesday it's some other thing i've never even heard of 
I got to sit here and go, yeah, yeah, no, those 80 videos I did about my autistic son. <laughs> you know, it's not that, it's this. Um, and I know that's, well, in my heart of hearts, I know that's not going to happen, but I don't know that's not going to happen. Uh, I'm convinced I'm right and that we're right because you've all given me advice and the school are convinced and the doctor said she was convinced and all of this. So I feel like we're right. But because we're a day and a half away from it, I mean, he, as I say, he's oblivious. He's just getting on with it. He's just plays Roblox, watches his programs, listens to his music that he likes, um, you know, eats his food, whatever. He, he's just in his routine. But Claire and I are at a point where I woke up this morning and said to her, I did not sleep last night. And she said that she'd woke up at three, partially because she was ill, partially because she was in the middle of a dream where she sat down with a doctor and she was a male doctor, not a normal doctor, in this weird dream. And they, she said they had a book this thick. And they were like, here are all the possible things that we could diagnose your son with. I've gone through every single one and not one of them fits. So there's, there is nothing. And she said she was just there like, this can't be true. Like, no. And she was just frantic in her dream. Like, what is the answer? I don't know what to do. And, I, and she sort of told me about it. And I was like, that's so bizarre. Not bizarre, but relatable because my dreams were all like finding out it was nothing and we were just making it up or finding out that it was something completely random that we didn't know how to deal with um i even weirdly because i've been reading the news dreamt that world war three broke out and the kids had to go live in cornwall um which is bizarre and my whole kind of it, it happened in like several phases but one of the there's just things that was just plaguing me for most of the night was that he wouldn't have the support he needed, that Ben would go from a two-year-old to a, like a, 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 an older kid throughout the war, and Emily would be an adult by the time I saw her again. And it was all just really weird. And then I ended up just wandering the wasteland, f trying, to, trying to get to Cornwall after the war when the world had kind of ended. And it was just all bizarre, but all that I kept thinking about was this damn diagnosis. It's just there, like, just hanging there, waiting for an answer. Um, this has probably been the weirdest bit for us. Like for him, again, it's just normal day to day. The hard bits for him have been living it. The hardest bit for us, which is in no comparison, is this little bit now of knowing it's this far away from an answer and wondering what the hell we're gonna do if they don't know or they don't have the expected answer. I know I kind of touched on this the other day, but if she just says, we don't know, we're gonna have to go to the panel and talk about it. I feel like I've got to just get a bit stressy. I don't know, like, I feel like I need to just push harder. I don't know. Like, ah, this is so weirdly uncomfortable and scary because it's like, it's a massive day. It's a massive day. And, you know, the, the acceptance is all there. We accept whatever the outcome is. You know, that Ollie is Ollie and we'll do everything we can for him and love him and support him. And it's not about, you know, trying to say, oh, it's about us or anything like that. It's... It's just I want it. I want the answer to be a strong, affirmative answer that we can help him just get on with life with. I want this done. I want it just finished so that he knows who he is and we can get on with it. And I just I'm stressing that we're not going to get it. I think because we we feel like I feel like it has been every now and again we've got to a point where we could have got answers and we haven't. So now I'm just kind of like this is the final one in a way. And if it's not the final one. What the bleed neck do we do next? I'm sure a lot of you can empathise with that. Um, you know, lots of people have said about their scenarios. I don't know. I feel like I always prepare for the worst. So I'm kind of like, the first thing we can do is ask for a second opinion. The second thing we can do is challenge it. Um, the third thing we can do is go private, but then the public sector won't accept a private diagnosis. I just don't really know. We'll see what happens. It could all be for naught. They could just say, yep, sorted everything we needed, all job done. Um, again, they could come up with something completely left field. I just don't know. And I don't even, like, it's so hard to think what other things there could be. That I, I was just Googling like, for, for alternatives the other day. That's how much it's consuming my kind of thoughts because I just thought if I can line up some ideas that I maybe know it could be that, then that way, the second they say it, I can pivot and start thinking about that and get in the support for that and get groups that can tell us about that and whatever. But it's just very, there's nothing. There isn't anything. There's like minor little twists on autism and things like that that exist. I've seen some people in groups, I mean, say that their child has whatever, you know, and it's like, oh, okay, that's a, a, a rare variant. But it's not something that, that Ollie has that's, or yet shows symptoms of having. It's... 
<sighs> I just, I'm going to stop because you know where I'm coming from. It's all, you know, I, I go around in circles like this. You get my point. Day and a half. And it's just like, I don't know. It's just eating us alive a little bit. And we try really hard not to let it affect everything else um, and, and affect our, our day to day. But I think it's probably not helped by the fact that we both got these colds that are running us down a bit and didn't get much sleep and all of that. Um, other than going for the haircut, I'm just seeing what I wrote in my notes. The weekend was pretty decent. I mean, it was quite quiet. We played a lot of Pokemon because there's an event on and I can't, I, Ollie's got a, a gold magic up and I want one and I can't find one anywhere. And he kept saying, if I get another one, I'll give it to your dad. And I'm like, no, because that'll cost too much. I really appreciate the gesture. You could see how he really, he, he loves giving me his ones. And I feel like that's cheating. It's almost taking advantage of him wanting to give me them. I think he just likes that I want it. So, and he could give me it. Um, he just, like, I, oh, I don't know. He just enjoys it, bless him. Um, and I feel like I'm robbing him of that benefit, but I also just don't want to rob his Pokemon because he's, he's, he's a seven year old and do you know what I mean? It's not that big of a deal. I just enjoy the game. Um, we, what did we do? Oh, I'm running out of uh, my train of thought. We, I mean, I, I binged re reading One Punch Man on Shonen Jump, the app I mentioned on the last video. Um, I read 120 of them, I think, and then uh, went on a death note. I mean, I, I was reading so much yesterday with this cold, I ended up falling asleep. I was knackered from thinking about the words on the screen. Um, ended up having a kip on the sofa. Um, it didn't really help because Ben kept bursting in my face and shouting and then Ollie kept wanting things and asking, you know, not, not accepting that I was just out for the count, bless him. Um, what else did I do? The, pff, nothing, nothing else happened. I'm gonna wrap up there, I think. Hope you're all well. Um, this week is, is just horrible at the moment. Hopefully tomorrow will go quick and we can just get some answers on Wednesday. Uh, I don't think there's anything else really going on off the top of my head. What would there be? I know Claire's away on the weekend. She's going out with work. I think they're doing an escape room, a clown themed one, which I said to her, I would just smash the doors down and get out. I don't like uh, clowns. None of us in this family like clowns. She doesn't like clowns. I don't know why she's doing a clown related thing, but sounds like hell. I've never done an escape room. It has made me think maybe I should get Kev to film as doing one as a group next time we're at an event because he's got a camera kit and it would just be quite funny to do one. I don't know if they'd let you even film to be fair because that would ruin the... Uh, the escape route, I guess, but eh, I don't know. Anyway, hope you're all well. Let me know how your weekend went in the comments. Let me know how you're getting on this week. If you've got any advice on what we can do, if you, this is a good question for me, actually, if you got to this point and they said to you, nothing, and you challenged that, and then they were like, oh no, wait, we were wrong. How did that work? I don't even know. I'm kind of like, should they be accountable for that? The odds of them saying that to us feels low. <clears throat> in my heart of hearts, I see the call going, yeah, the ADOS was really uh, interesting. Um, the A, the AB, test, is that what it was called? The ADHD test was interesting too. I feel like we're saying sort of mid autism, I know it's not really done like that anymore, autism and ADHD sorted. This is what you need to do next. Would you like to consider medication? I don't know, probably not. Left, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'll talk to Claire, let's catch up in future. I feel like that's how it's gonna go and it's gonna feel really like, huh, I can't believe they just dumped two on us like that. That's how I see it. If it's not like that, then obviously I'll talk about it. Um, if I can get away with it, because I'm gonna be getting a call at work, if I can get away with it, I'll film a bit of a, a reaction because that feels really crass. I'll film my thoughts when they're more raw um, because I feel like, again, seeing the outcome might be useful for people. I'm not trying to be all X Factory and, you know, reality TV. I'm just trying to share it because I know that part of the point of doing an autism diagnosis playlist on here has been that people who are starting it can start at the beginning and people who are finishing it can see the end here and go, that's pretty much how mine went or mine was different or I didn't think of that, let's do that. So again, feeling like I'm at the end of the playlist is uh, exciting in a way because I can then tidy it up a bit and say boom there you go start to finish that's the process um even if it is a negative outcome where they, where they say it's not that i can say that's the process this playlist is finished 80 videos job done um hopefully you found it useful um we'll do a wrap up on that once i know where the situation is but yeah thanks for watching i'll see you tomorrow hope you're all well goodbye